and welcome everybody to today's webinar. Today we're going to be going over the exciting features or enhancements made to our applications, whether it could be our desktop product or even our online product or our mobile website. Um, we're going to be going over in four different categories today. So we're going to be doing the 1040 desktop program enhancements, new and updated forms, business program enhancements, and then I'll be covering two new features in our Crosslink online application. For today's call, I'm going to be doing a lot of um, our new features via the PowerPoint. At the very end, I'll dive into the program and I'll show you these new features and new forms that Crosslink has for this new tax season. First up, we want to go over our 1040 program enhancements. So this is talking in particular to our desktop application. Um, we have a few items where it comes to managing your business. We have some new setup features and also some tax return enhancements that some of these forms or worksheets have some no, new tools available to you guys. So to get started, we're going to go over the topics that go over managing your business. And the first one that we are rolling out this year is remote invoicing. Um, we have built in remote invoicing on top of our payments tab within the software. And this will be applicable for both desktop and Crosslink Online. The point of the remote invoicing is for you guys to be able to collect your taxpayers prep fees directly from them within our software. You'll be able to shorten and improve your collection cycles. You can send an invoice to them via email from the software. The only thing that you do have to sign up with is Pay Junction in order to utilize the remote invoicing feature. What it will look like in the software, whether you're on our desktop or our online application, is that when you see payments, and that's one of the function tabs when you're within a tax return on the very top, you'll see payments. And when you open up that window, it will then say three options, payment details, Pay Junction, or as you see highlighted here, remote invoice. From there, you'll create invoice and then it will open up an overlay and show you the invoice that you'll send out to your taxpayer via email. These features will be um, further in depth, you know, as we go through our future webinars. But again, this is brand new that we are offering all of our EROs this season. And this is what the invoice will look like when you open up that option. It will tell you the fees, your prep fees that they'll be paying. You can even write them a little message. And then as you'll see simply, you'll hit send invoice. So this is the overlay again, when you use the remote invoicing feature within the payments tab. What your taxpayer will get, once you send that invoice over to them, what would they need to do? Um, there is a 2% uh, percent convenience fee with using this feature, paying via credit card or debit card. They will be able to input their, and validate their credit card information. Of course, everybody needs to accept the terms and conditions. And then finally, once they click submit, that will now reflect within the tax software for you to see that you have collected their payment for their prep fees. And how that looks like on their end is this is what they will get when they open up the email. They will see what the charges are. They'll select the pay invoice, put in their information, and click submit payment then that's a nice, easy process, process um, for them to go through when you want to gather their prep fees, you know, if they have to pay you directly. I'm um, going integrating with both of our products. Moving on from remote invoicing, we have TaxPass. TaxPass, as we have promoted the last few seasons, has been a mobile application. Um, we will actually enhance this feature to now become a tax pass mobile website. So emphasis on a website here and mobile. We no longer have to direct your taxpayers to download an app. They do not have to go to an app store, Google or Android, iPhone. None of that is required. Simply, um, your software will be embedded with either an invite to send to them directly. Um, you'll have a new URL, okay? A URL is a website link whether it's in your software or in the TaxLink Tax portal, you would tell them to go to this website. And it's going to be taxpass.com slash 
your mobile app ID. So if you've used TaxPass in the previous seasons, you do know we have a unique mobile ID for each of your offices out there. That ID will now be tied into this unique URL and you can easily copy and paste the URL or list it on your website and you can have your taxpayers go directly to the website and they can create their account, upload their documents and send all the information that you need for them into the software. So again, the biggest change to TaxPass is it's no longer an app, it will become a mobile website and this is a coming soon feature but definitely before season starts. You didn't lose any functionality with TaxPass. Um, you'll still be able to send your signatures, you'll be able to take pictures and everything else. So no functionality is lost, it's simply how your taxpayer accesses the information now. With that said, there's a few new things on how you can communicate tax pass to your taxpayers. Um, it does differentiate depending on what product you are using. Desktop allows for you to send an invite via text message or email. Crosslink Online will embed a URL within the profile menu of the software. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here you see that inside the software, you can send an invite when you're using desktop. Um, this would be within the return menu of the inside of a tax return. So what our recommendation here is for this is when you wanna send an invite, it's really great for those clients that maybe you already have returning clients because you could come performa their tax return, right? Performa means carrying forward a tax return from year to year. So if you have returning clients, you want to perform their return within the software first and then say, hey, here's an invite. If you have any updated information that you need to send to your preparer, now fill it out in TaxPass. So then TaxPass will then override with any of the new information that your taxpayer needs to give. Okay, so we have multiple ways of helping you guys reach your customers. Um, of course, you could just tell them directly to go to the TaxPass website, or you can have them inside the software, perform their return, send them an invite, and they can simply just upload documents via the TaxPass website and submit it to the software. So again, this is the invite for desktop. For Crosslink Online, um, when you're using an online application, when you see your name on the top right corner, that is called your profile menu. Your profile menu will now house what's called the tax pass URL. So that URL will be a copy and paste feature. So you can just copy it and you can paste it into your email. Um, you can send it via text message if you need to, but that's how you're gonna have access to sharing your tax pass URL from the online application. And again, the same premises matter too. If you have a customer that's returning, perform their tax return first, then send them the invite and say, hey, go ahead and update your information so I can have the latest info for your tax return. Okay, so that's how, what we have for TaxPass. Again, the two biggest changes, it became a mobile website. Mobile website meaning it's good for phones, tablets, it's really you know, good for touchscreen devices. Um, you can use it on a desktop, but just know the scalability is mainly meant for a mobile website. Finishing up with some tax program enhancements, um, our extended reports feature. So that's where you can customize reports based off of your business needs. We have added some new and enhanced search and display fields. The biggest ones we have found or for this season is the Schedule C. You can run um, reports specific on a specific business code. So if you wanted to see how many of your Schedule Cs or Uber drivers or have salons, um, we can run those type of reports with that specific item. You can run reports with appointment dates and times. And then going again back to tax pass, you can also run a report to see who has imported tax returns via tax pass. Um, and then I'll also show a feature that we can actually, with desktop, send a mass text message or email to invite customers to use TaxPass. And again, that specific feature is to desktop only. 
some new setup features that we have for the software are going to come down to these three main ones. Within the print options, we get a lot of recommendations, but now you can actually choose, and this is just an option, to print the date on page two of the 1040. So if you want that a date to be applicable on both pages when you're printing the 1040, we, I'll show you where you can do that within the setup of the printer settings, or you can leave it off. Up to you, but I'll definitely showcase that. Client letters. We have two new additions. Um, we have amended state e-file letters. So that's something now you will find in a client letter option there, and you can uh, adjust those. And then we also have appointment letters that are now available in Spanish. So that is an enhancement as well. Billing setup. We can now offer the ability to carry over prior to your invoice balances without excluding overpayments. So you can simply choose that option if you want to carry over your taxpayers prior to your invoices um, from year to year. And again, don't worry, I'll show you what these are inside the software once we get there. Now going into the last few tax return enhancements. So that was our setup features. Now we'll go over the enhancements for the returns. We have implemented a new and improved vehicle asset allocation, which means that when you do depreciate a vehicle um, based off any of the schedules and you have a married filing joint return, you can specify um, for that vehicle to be allocated to either the taxpayer or the spouse. So when you do that, and you do have to split the return, so maybe now they need to go to married filing joint, I mean, separate, you can designate who that asset of the vehicle goes to. So that is an enhancement when you're dealing with any type of vehicle assets and a married filing joint return. Our Schedule C, again, building off of these business codes, um, we implemented a search bar, a keyword search, for searching through business codes to maybe make it a little bit easier when you're using the choices button. So I'll showcase to you guys that as well. And then lastly, for our tax return enhancements, um, when we're looking at any NOLs, which is net operating loss and its binary attachments, um, at the bottom of the schedule one, we do have the option if you would like to create or import your own statement rather than filling it out from the worksheet within the schedule one. So I'll definitely show you how you can get to that option as well. Okay, so I'm gonna toggle into the software real quick. We're gonna go over some of those features that we have. So here, if we haven't downloaded Crosslink 2023 yet, it is out there, got released yesterday. So go ahead and let's get it downloaded if you haven't yet. But we're going to go ahead and get into a return by clicking select the return. Go ahead and click go, and I'm going to load up my return here. And I'm just going to briefly show you those options that I went over for the return features. Okay. So to start off with um, our print options um, for the 1040. So I'm going to go over setup and then return. So this way, if you're following along with anything with our setup, it's always going to be within our setup menu. And first, I'm going to go to Printer Setup. At the Printer Setup, we're going to click on Options. And if you scroll about halfway down, you'll see the option of Print Date on page 2 of 1040. If you would like to apply that to your print package, you go ahead and you select the box. Okay. So that's the first one. And then we also have within our setup features, we had any client letters, I'll quickly show where you get them. It's set up, client letters, and you're located here and you can go through your amended e-files and all of that. So if you're ever interested to see what exactly these client letters say in detail, that's where you can find that. And then we have going over a few of these form options. So starting with the um, schedule one, I was mentioning that you have a NOL binary attachment. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, where it says binary attachments, you now have these options here. Check this box to manually create the NOL carry forward deduction statement instead of automatically creating a binary attachment from the NOL worksheet. 
So if you would like to attach one, you would simply click the link and you can either you import it, right? If you got it scanned or emailed to you, this is where you can import that document. Or if you just simply, if I go back to that field, wanted to fill it out via the worksheet, you can select the box and then fill out the worksheet there. Okay, so that covered our print, a new print feature, covered our NOL document where you access that. And then I want to show you the Schedule C business codes. So as you see here, I clicked on my Schedule C on the left-hand side under our attached forms list. And then we have our options of A and B. So A is what kind of profession this is. And then we have B, which is our business codes. So you can see here, we do have a enter a keyword search. So you can definitely start typing in some options here. Um, maybe I'll put services. And then when you click on the bottom box where their numeric code, the numeric business code goes, you can click choices. You can see we've actually outlined them into the categories here. Uh, this one's accommodation, food services, administrative, waste, um, performance, construction. So we did organize this table here so you guys can quickly see where these codes lie. And you can see that they are in a sequential order in a way of each of these different categories. So again, just breaking it a little easier in the eyes, knowing where you need to go to by just looking at the subject matter. So that is just a new enhancement when you are working within the Schedule C here. Okay, let's go over some forms that we have to get to. So next up, we have some new forms and some worksheets. So a new form for this tax season is the 7203 form. This form is mainly used by any S corporation shareholders to figure the potential limitations of their share with an S corporation deduction. Um, so this is a new form that will be added this year. We also have the form 8697, and this deals with um, figuring out interest due for any look back methods pertaining to section 460 on any long-term contracts. Um, so this is another new worksheet that has been added to our software or for the tax season. And I'll show you what these look like again once I finish this category. What we have provided some updates for. Um, anytime when you're performing, you know, a customer coming from year to year, um, we do now show the IRS Act codes on the 1040 for the prior two years. So that's something new with Performa. The information and status worksheet. This information and status, and if you don't know what this is, it's a worksheet that once you transmit your return, it is like the gatekeeper of all of the statuses of your tax return when you're um, filing the federal, a bank product, um, a state return, all of the information gets updated on this information and status worksheet. And now we actually added the federal direct payment payment history. So that's the new addition to the information and status worksheet. But anytime after you finalize that tax return and you sent it off, you transmit it, that's where I always gear all of our customers to go to and check when you wanna know the latest status of your return. So that's a great improvement for this worksheet. And then we did have some updates when it comes to the schedule 40, 40, 2441. This deals with child and dependent care credits. Um, some new laws that came with it this season was reverts to the old, the tax year 2020 rules and is non-refundable. Your maximum amount of qualifying expenses will be um, either $3,000 for one child with a maximum credit of about $1,050. Um, you can have $6,000 for two children and a maximum credit being around two grand. Um, you could jot this down. I'll leave this up here. I know people really love this information here. So I'll just leave this here for a second. Um, maximum credit percentage rate is 35% for taxpayers with an AGI of $15,000 or less. Okay. Um, on our schedule 8812, that's additional child tax credits. Again, some improvements or um, enhancements made it to this calculations here. The credit is available for children 17 and under. So that's their date of birth right here. 
uh, taxpayer must have earned income over 2,500 to be eligible for the refundable portion of credit. And then all qualifying children must have a valid SSN or social security number. Okay, so these are the enhancements when um, filling out their child tax credit form. Again, leave this up here for a second. I know some people take notes. Okay. So let me go toggle back into our software. Let's go over these forms here. So I'm going to start off with that 7203 form. So I did build this return already to have a majority of our forms here. But I'm going to go ahead and add that form. And you see here the S Corp shareholder stock and debit basis limitations. So I'm just gonna simply scroll down and show what this form looks like. Um, as you see, it links mainly to K1s. So if you have a K1 and stuff, you can link these forms together. And by doing so, that's at the bottom here at choices, and you can go ahead and fill that out. So that's where you'll find that option there. But this would be your 7203 form. Moving on from here, the next form we had was the 8697 form. And this was your interest form for any look back methods. Um, so here you would just fill out if this is applicable, if it needs to be mailed, you would fill out the entity. And then information does get populated on here, but you would just go through and make sure everything's calculated correctly. Okay. So that here is the 8697 form. And then not much with the 2441, but just showing you that we do have them here. This was your daycare credit form. So most of that was just the changes I meant with more tax law updates, not physical changes to the form. But just again, if people don't know what they look like, here's what the 2441 form is. It's your child and dependent daycare information. And then we have the 8812, and that is your um, the additional child tax credit form. So again, most of it's calculated fields from when you enter in your dependent and your income and all of that that comes forward. So here's the form here. And again, it reverted back to your tax year 2020 forms. Okay, so those are the main forms that we um, added or implemented um, this season. Um, again, it was a 7203, it was the 8697, and then there were changes made to the 8812 and the 2441 form. We did have two big enhancements to our business program. So the business program is where when you do any corporation returns, um, I can't showcase the business package, it's not released yet. Um, but just note for K2s um, with the 1065 or 1120S, um, we did a schedule K2 is an extension of the schedule K that can now be e-filed. And the same thing for the K3, um, this form can now be e-filed as well. So again, this is in particular for those individuals that file any corporation forms. This will pertain to them within the business package of the desktop program. And then lastly, with business updates, the program can now e-file um, these 1041 business states of Kentucky, Louisiana, and Maryland. Going on, we are now going to go into Crosslink Online with the two enhancements we have with our online application. So if you're an online user, um, we have two enhancements for you guys. One is the guided estimator mode. Um, this is it going to be a new guided approach to starting a tax return that will add forms based on the provided input from your taxpayer. So this method will be um, coming out shortly. And then we also have within our document archive, the ability to send a request document link. And that is generating a secure link to be emailed to your taxpayer and or spouse 
for them to securely upload their documents to the document archive. So let me showcase a little bit what these are. Starting with the guided estimator mode, this will reduce the learning curve of new preparers, as well as anybody that's transitioning from our multi-site online product, formerly known as MSO. It does take the methodology based on creating an estimate for your taxpayer, but by having some forms you know, required from your taxpayer, you go through and you're gonna fill it out, and then it will add those forms to the final tax return. Um, the initial estimate is only good for the information that's provided by the taxpayer, right? So you are going through when you're selecting what type of income they had or any credits. So a the more information you gather from your taxpayer, the more accurate using the guided estimator mode will be. And what it will look like um, is going to be when you start a tax return, it's going to ask you if you want to start in estimator mode or if you want to start in what we call forms based. Um, when you select the estimator mode, it's going to bring you through the five categories of a tax return um, where it comes to adding your contact information, your dependent information, income, credits, and states. So once you fill out everything that's applicable, then it will ask you to finalize it, and then you'll go through and filling out this, the forms that you've then added. So again, this is a new method for so starting a tax return, and this is only applicable within our Crossing Online application. If you do use desktop, the desktop has the interview mode. And then I covered um, the request document link. So this was kind of rolled out a little bit before season. So some of you may have seen it already, but this here allows you to send a secure link to your taxpayers from the document archive. So when you go into the document archive, and this will be cover covered more in depth on our remote paperless webinar coming up, but just to give you a nice overview, in the document archive, you're going to have two options, either add a document or request. Requesting simply sends a secure link to your taxpayer via email. These links are good for three days. They do expire after that due to security. After that, you can send a new link to your taxpayer. You can essentially send an infinite amount of links to your taxpayers. So let's say you ask for one document and then need another one, you can send them a new link. What that link will entail for your taxpayer is that they will have to log in and that's using the last four of their social, the first and last name, their zip code and their date of birth. And that's again, just matching the information that's on the tax return. So this way again, we know where we're routing their documents. When they upload their documents, it will automatically appear within the document archive. So again, this might be a nice way you already started this return and say, hey, I need these documents. Here's an email, just upload them here. So that is um, how we have the request document link. And again, this is only for Crosslink Online. And here's what it will look like. Um, when you click on request documents, you're gonna choose their email. You feel like you're writing an email, you have a subject line. And then you have a body, so you could just write a message there. And then you can default for, is this for the taxpayer or is it for the spouse? And you can give them a document type label so they know what they're looking for. And then once you hit request, you'll get it in a pending status. So that's an overview of our request document link. And then from there, that's everything that we had for what's new in the software or our crosslink for this year.